so much for being here. For you that will be watching this later, I know we're not live streaming, but you're going to watch it. Or, well, you'll get a chance to watch it. I don't know if you're going to watch it, but you'll get a chance to watch it later. I know Corey watches them all later. Oh, Corey, yeah, so so Corey watches them all. But anyway, so we're, we're wrapping up um, the well, uh, not the young adult ministry, but just the well, the Sunday night portion. And, and so what we decided, or I guess not really a we, but I decided was we'd take this last series and... Um, and we'd, we we kind of tailor it to that. So it's not a Christmas series, although tonight will be somewhat of a Christmas message uh, text. Uh, but um, here's the point. We've called this Beneath the Surface. And, and I've said this every week and, and, you know, sound like a broken record. I get that. But here, here's the deal. When, when we hear that the, those of us that have grown attached to this Sunday night gathering of young adults and people that think we're young adults, you know, still want to be young adults or whatever. Um, it's, you know, it, we, we look at the surf, we see that or hear that it's going to be, you know, lo no longer happening after, you know, December 18th. And we think, man, that's not a, that's not a good thing. It looks bad, right? I mean, we, 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 that we're sad. Like some of us are. I don't, you may not be sad, but um, I'm kind of sad. You know, I, I, I want it to go on in some ways. I'm, I have mixed feelings. So on the surface, it doesn't look good, right? And how many times in our lives do things happen and on the surface, it just looks bad. It looks bleak. It doesn't look like it's going to be anything for our good, but oftentimes we don't see what God is doing, right? Because God sometimes chooses to work beneath the surface. So that's what we decided calling this. You know, it's, it's beneath the surface is not always a bigger iceberg, <laughs> right? Um, I mean, I know that's the, the majority. They, you know, the, the, if you study icebergs, I don't know who does that, but um, it, the majority of the iceberg is under the surface. Well, it's not always bad when you're talking about God. It's not always. It's not bad what God is doing under the surface. We, but it it takes us some time to learn that, and sometimes, quite honestly, it takes us going through some difficulty to learn that. That, that on the surface it may be difficult, but underneath the surface we don't know that God is just really at work. And so um, when I, I kind of wrote it down this way, into or among deeper aspects of something, that's what beneath the surface means, as opposed to those that are, that are most easily identified. In other words, when, when things don't develop like we, we think they will, or we want them to, we see one thing, but something else, total, something totally different happens. And so, with the well coming to a close, coming to an end, it's not because it wasn't working, and not because this was not, ha you know, it just we needed to, we needed to do something different. We needed a, a, to use a still a line from Friends. We needed to pivot. You don't know what that. I guess you never saw that episode of Friends, which is probably a good thing. Um, but um, anyways, and to steal a, a well, I, I will say this. Um, by the way, this Christmas, December 25th, is on a Sunday, right? And um, Logan's already laughing back in the back. He knows what I'm going to say. It's the first Sunday with no well. You'll get it in a second. Never mind. Okay. It was funnier when Logan said it. Do you, did, you, did you understand what I said? Uh, who didn't get it? Don't be ashamed. Ashley, you didn't get it? I totally got it. You didn't no. get it? No. Okay, thank you. Very good. All right. So so we looked at a couple different people in Scripture. Um, uh, you can edit that out, Zach, later because that obviously that went over really well. Uh, no well. Um, but so we looked at scripture, some just some people. We first we looked at Gideon, right? We looked at at Gideon that got God's call to Gideon, and it didn't look good. 
right? Gideon is hiding. He didn't want to be found by anybody, but God finds him and an angel comes to him and he gives him this call and it looks like there's no way this is good, but we know what God did, right? We know God was working under the surface. Uh, then we looked at Ananias out of Acts chapter 9, I believe it was. And I said, I've never preached a message about Ananias or from that text itself, but Ananias has this great call, the, the unique opportunity to go see a man named Saul. God calls him in an event and says, I want you to go see Saul. And Ananias is like, are you kidding me? I know everybody knows who Saul is and, and he's persecuting Christians. Saul later turns out to be Paul and, and he gets the, you know, the assignment of a lifetime. Ananias to go, to go just basically teach Saul the word and, and, or the scripture and, and, and Ananias is like, I don't want to go because he, he doesn't like Christians. He didn't know about the Paul or Saul's Damascus Road experience. So on the surface, it looked dangerous. It, it looked like suicidal, right? Nobody would in their right mind would do that. But he didn't know God had already been working in Saul's life and already changed his name to Paul. And so he didn't know that. He didn't know what God was doing on the surface. So... Um, God called an audible, right? We, t we said that. Then last week we looked at Moses. You know, remember what an audible is. Is An audible is when, when you come to the line of scrimmage, a quarterback comes to the line of scrimmage, he has a play that's already been called in, and, and he knows what the play is, but he sees the defense, and they're set up to, for that play, and so he calls an audible. He changes the play. Well, sometimes God does that to our, in, a, in our lives. He changes the play. He, he, he changes our calling uh, or our assignment. Not maybe Maybe not our calling doesn't change, but our assignment changes. How that, how we live out that calling, it changes from time to time. When I was first called to the ministry, I had no idea what I was called to. I just knew I was called to vocational ministry. I didn't know it was student ministry. Most people thought it was music ministry because I was so musically talented. I wasn't all that musically talented. I could just sing a little bit. But most people thought it was music ministry, but I knew it wasn't music ministry because I wasn't, I didn't know music. And I really didn't know what it was. But then God kind of transitioned me, and, and, I, and it was a call to student ministry. And then about four years ago, God transitioned my call. It didn't change my call. It's, it, my, I mean, my call is still the call, it's still the call from God. It just, it just changed a little bit. He, he, um, he, he gave, he reassigned it, right? So it's still a call from God. He just gives us different assignments along the way sometimes. So that's what he did here in Ananias. And in, in Moses, we looked at Moses. He questioned God's call, right? How can you use me? I can't, I don't, I, I, I've escaped from that place. And you want me to go back to that place? I, I, I mean, I, I, I escaped with my life and I've, have, I've lived in the desert. And there's a reason I've lived in the desert because I haven't wanted to be found by those people. And now you want me to go back and lead my people out of that land? So it just didn't make sense. Well, he didn't know that God was going to lead them and, and lead him every step of the way. So we don't know. We look at this, some of us, um, maybe not everybody, I get that. But we look at this that the well, our well service is going to be ending. And we look at it, some of us look at it and think, there's no way this could be a good thing because we enjoy coming. And we enjoy listening to worship. And heaven fellowship, and that's about it. But other than that, you know, we, we like coming. No, I'm just kidding. Other than that, we like being around each other. And on the surface, it may not look very good, but we don't know what God is up to, right? We don't know what God is doing under the surface. God is doing some great things. So, um, we, we've had four years. And as I said to you when we talked about God doing the audible, when we started this in 2018, um, well, I didn't, I had no idea, and I don't think anybody that was a part of that launch team thought, well, in four years we're going to be done, you know, we're going to do this for a couple years, then we'll do something else. That's not, that wasn't our, we didn't go into that with that plan, right? Our plan was to just go on until God, whatever, called us home. Maybe. I don't know. But they're just at least changed. Did something. We didn't have an end in sight. But we didn't know what God was going to do. And so God is not closing. He's, he's, he may be closing one door. But he's opening other doors for us. And I'll get into that in a little bit later. But 
In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, I don't know if this is on, did I, is this one on there? Okay, this is, I added this later. Here's what Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. So, there's a season for everything. There, there's, it, it, everything has a time, everything has a place, and it runs its course. And, and our season, as this, the way it looks right now, is coming to an end. But it doesn't mean that God is not still working. It doesn't mean, in fact, it means he's working in a diff, totally different way. So tonight, uh, we're going to look at an interesting, um, well, I don't know. I think it's pretty interesting. We're going to look at an interesting concept, even though it's, it's a couple weeks before Christmas. Can you believe that? Anybody got their Christmas shopping done? Anybody start? You're done? Did you already get my gift? Okay. Um, so, have, so anybody, have anybody not started? Yes. Bruce hasn't started yet. So pray for Bruce. He hasn't started Christmas shopping yet. Um, I wear size extra large, Bruce. Uh, just so you know. Uh, no. Uh, but, so tonight we're going to look at, even though Christmas is a couple weeks, we're not really going to look at the birth of Jesus. We're going to look at uh, just before that happens. We're going to look at a couple different passages and pray for me because I'm going to read pretty long sections in both of these passages. You can go to Luke chapter 1. We'll start there and then we'll go to Matthew chapter 1 and, and be there as well. And you know how I do when I read. I don't read very um, no pun intended there, but um, I, don't, I don't read extremely well, so just bear with me, and I hope I can get through this quickly. So, uh, in Luke chapter 1, verses 26, 26 through uh, 38... Here's what, it's, here's what scripture says. In the sixth month of the angel Gabriel was sent to the God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed. That means like, it would be like um, you know, engaged, but it's a, li it's a little deeper than that. In our culture, it would be engaged, but it's even more deeper than that. It's more of a commitment than that. But betrothed to a man named jo who was named Joseph he, uh, of the house of David, and, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her, the, he, the angel, came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. That's, that's key. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled. And wouldn't you be? Just imagine Mary. She's probably, who knows, but she's 12, 13, 14, maybe 15 at the most. And, and she's minding her own business. And this angel comes to her. She's, she's a young, young lady. She was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God uh, will give to him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never, will, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? Which is a very legitimate question, right? Uh, I would ask that. And the angel said, hopefully I would never have to ask that. But, and the angel answered and said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative is Elizabeth. Uh, this is just some background here. Uh, not really pertinent to our story, but some background. Uh, your relative Elizabeth, her, her cousin Elizabeth, is in her old age and is conceived a, and is and also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of her with her who has been called barren. She, she, Elizabeth was well, thought to be barren, but now in her old age she had um, she was pregnant with, with a child. For nothing will be impossible with God. Verse 38, and Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Okay, let me pray with you real quick. Father, I, I know this is a long section. And Lord, I pray that as, as we read through this and the next passage, Father, that we will just, you will, uh, this is a very familiar story. We all know this, but you, you would open our eyes and our hearts, our hearts, our ears to hear something just fresh and new from you. We're your servants, Father. We long to hear just, just a 
a clear word from you and from your word. Lord, I ask these things in your name. Amen. So, so here's what we know about this passage. On the surface, sometimes life brings anxiety, doesn't it? Did you see what it said in verse 29? Mary was troubled, I think. She said, but, but she was greatly troubled. She wasn't just troubled. She was greatly troubled. Um, sometimes life, when we put our, our, our emphasis or our try to find our satisfaction in things of this world, Scripture is all over, talk, talks about that in the New Testament. But we try to find fulfillment in this life. It, it leads us to anxiety. And, and the world brings on the anxiety. And this, this word obviously brought ang anxious, anxiousness or at least she was very troubled by this. And wouldn't you be? I mean, just imagine being a young teenage girl. She's, she's betrothed to be married, betrothed to be married, but she, she's not married yet. She hasn't had any relations with her future husband. So, and he says, you're going to be the mother of, of the Savior of the world, basically. But in, in life, put it in our perspective, in life, sometimes life causes, oftentimes life causes anxiety. Doesn't it? Look what Paul writes in Philippians 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We don't have to be anxious about life or God's calling in our life because we know as long as we belong to God, He is with us. Now, I wish I could tell you that that is enough for me and I never get anxious about anything. But that's not true. I still get anxious at times when I, I know something is, is, um, is pressing that I need to take care of or I feel like I'm a little overwhelmed with, with too many things on my plate or I'm trying to spin too many plates or whatever. I get anxious. I get anxious. But according to Scripture, there's really no reason for me to be anxious. We don't have to be anxious about life because God is with us. And scripture tells us as later on we'll look, he didn't give us that spirit of anxiety and fear. So on the surface, life may bring us anxiety. And I'm sure that did for, for Mary. But beneath, beneath the surface, in verse 30, God brings assurance. Look what he says in verse 30. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for, for you have found favor with God. It brings us assurance. What does that mean? The situation that is causing anxiety may still be there, but Jesus can bring confidence even in the midst of uncertainty and definitely in the midst of anxiety. Not because the situation is better, but because the Savior is with us and He will never leave us. He, he brought us to this moment and He will bring us through it. But we just have to trust in him. Jesus himself says in John 16, verse 33, he said, I have, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. You're not going to no peace in the world. And then he says, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. So he's telling us, listen, we don't have to be anxious. We don't have to be feeling this overwhelmed. We can have, Scripture later, go on, later on says that we are more than conquerors through him who gives us strength, through Christ. So we don't have to be, we don't have to be anxious. We can have assurance because God has overcome the world. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6 says, we can confidently say the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. I know life gives us difficulty at times. We all go through difficulty. I remember I say that just about every week. That's, that's not just because you're a Christian. If you do have a relationship with Christ, you don't. that's not just because the difficulty is nobody gets a pass on that, right? No, nobody gets just a, a you know... Past, you know, you, you don't you, you get a bypass around it. We all go through difficulty, but but he says here we don't have to be fearful of it 
And, and, and he also, the scripture tells us that because of Christ, we just read, we'll have persecution because of Christ in our lives. We will have some difficulty because of Christ. But we don't have to fear it. Not because the situation is going to get any better, but because Christ is with us. It can cause us great trouble. This, this beneath the surface we can cause great trouble but we need to remind ourselves God is working and he brings assurance in our lives isn't it great to be sure be certain of things there's not a lot that we can be certain of is there in our world today man there's just not a lot of certainty the, mainly, mainly the only thing that we can be certain of is just how uncertain the times are. <laughs> how, how crazy the times are right now. That's what we can be certain of. How just, just you know, you, 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 however you get news or if you, if you look at things online or, you know, if you're old school like the old people in the room and watch the news or whatever, it's, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it, it doesn't bring any certainty. The only certainty that brings is just that the world is chaos right now. That's all we have. But scripture tells us we can have assurance, not because things are good on the surface, but because God is always at work. Underneath the surface, perhaps, but he's always at work. And he never leaves, and he will never forsake us. Secondly, on the surface, life leaves us many questions, doesn't it? Look at verse 34. Mary says to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? That's a perfectly legitimate question. I, I mean, it's a perfect question. It makes perfect sense. Anybody would ask that. But some of our questions may be a little d different. How many of you, life has left you a bunch of questions that you don't have answers for yet? Why did this have to happen? When did, you know, when it happened? The way that it happened? I, I, you know, I don't know all the answers to those things. And you know what? You may not know them this side of heaven either. Things have happened in my life and I, don't, I still don't know some of the answers to those. Why those things? I have questions. I got a few questions I'm going to ask God one day. But then I, I was thinking that the other day. I was driving in my car and I thought, you know, I've got some questions. I really want to ask Jesus when I get to heaven. But then I thought, but, I, you know, I've never been there. So I didn't spend five minutes in heaven like the book said that somebody did. But... When I, get, I think, you know what? I think when we get there, I probably won't care about those questions anymore. I don't know that. But, but I'm kind of guessing that will be how, how it will be. Those questions won't matter anymore. Because I'll be in eternity with Jesus. And the questions that I have here on earth that I think I'm going to ask him won't even matter anymore. The problem is we'll never, the, the, the thing is, we'll never on this earth, as long as we are here on this earth, we'll never fully understand God's ways. We just, we can't. Our minds cannot comprehend. Scripture tells us that. Isaiah chapter 55 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. He, his ways are too high. We can't, we cannot comprehend them all. So he doesn't give those, give us the knowledge to do that. Because we just, we, we can't think, we can't go that high with him. We can't understand those things, and some can't handle this. I've, I've talked with people who have said, you know, I, I want to I I accept Christ, but I don't understand this. I don't, and they get in their own way. Their minds kind of get in their own way of following Christ. I, I, uh, years ago, when I was first in started in ministry, and and we had a young adult, a young, uh, student. He was a middle schooler, uh, got saved at a retreat, and um, his his family was kind of on the fringe. They didn't come a whole lot, but they had just started coming, and so I met with his family. He, he got saved and wanted to get baptized, and so his family wanted to meet with me in my office, and so we met, and and they said. Um, I don't remember how old, that kid was 13, 14 years old, something like that. Um, but um, 
they said, you know, we, we, we don't, I don't think he's ready to get baptized because he doesn't understand enough yet. And I said, N not that baptism saves us. I'm not, I'm not uh, advocating that or, or saying that. But I said, Here, here's the deal. We're never going to fool. We're never going to know enough. We're never going to fool it. That, that's, what, that's what being a disciple is. is about growing in our relationship with Christ. That's that whole process of sanctification. We, we never reach that point. Maybe when we get into heaven. Maybe when we spend eternity with him. But on this earth, we, I don't think we will ever reach the moment where, okay, I know all there is to know. We'll never get there. Because God's ways are just are not our ways. They're too high for us to understand. So we, on the surface, we may have a lot of questions. Why are things happening the way they are happening? Why is there so much chaos in our world today? Why are innocent people suffering? We don't know all the answers to that. We have questions on the surface. But beneath the surface, again, Mary had questions. But beneath the surface, God brings comfort. Look at verse 38. After she asks the question, Mary says in verse 37, For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. What, what changed in her attitude from just a couple of verses? She goes from being fearful and like, How can this be? I don't understand this. The angel says one more thing, and she says, whatever, I'm a servant of the Lord, whatever. See, on the surface, life may leave us questions, but, but beneath the surface, God brings us comfort, which means we don't have to have all the answers. We're just good enough with trusting God, and he'll sort things out. We, we just trust him, and he will bring us comfort, even in the midst of our questions. And can I just tell you, I don't always get that. I don't, I don't always, I'm not always here because I don't always allow God to bring me comfort. I, I rest in my questions too long, too often. And I don't always allow God to bring me the comfort that I know his word can bring. It can bring comfort even with full, out fully understanding. I, I love the writer, uh, the verse in Proverbs. What do we do when we don't understand? Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And don't lean on your, your own understanding. Why? Because you're never going to understand it all anyways. Just trust in the Lord. This sounds so simple, right? Ah, just trust. It's not simple at all if you try. Not simple. It's a simple process. But it's not a simple action to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. You may not understand. You may still have questions. But you can find comfort even in the midst of all of that. Even in the midst of fear. Because God didn't give us the spirit of fear. Paul writes to 2 Timothy that He didn't give us the spirit of fear and timidity. But He gave us the spirit of power and self-control. Life brings us fear. Life brings us questions. Yes, I know we have questions for God. I get that. But life just, just inundates us with it. Right? But we can have comfort and peace. Even in the midst of not always understanding. Because God is with us. Alright, flip over to Matthew chapter 1. Verses um, 19 through 25. Let me read this for you. And her husband Joseph, I, I love, we, we never hear enough about Joseph. Can you imagine being Joseph? Just, really, just for a moment, can you imagine being Joseph here? And her husband Joseph, which is not her legal, back in that day he was legally the, her husband, but they weren't, they weren't living together yet. I mean, they, they, so they hadn't known each other in a relational way, okay? And we're all adults here. So they, they didn't know each other in that way, as Scripture says, right? They had not known each other. So and her husband Joseph, being a just man, don't, don't miss that. He was a good man. Being a just man and, and unwilling to put her to shame after he finds out that she is expecting a child and he hasn't known her in that way yet. Uh, unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. 
Be, but he was, as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and, she shall call, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken to the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not. He knew her not. In, in, in an intimate way until she had given birth to the son and he called his name Jesus just imagine being Joseph and being called to do that so here, here's what I want to say about this now listen this is I hope I'm not taking too much liberty here but on the surface, sometimes life persuades us to do the honorable thing. Joseph was going to do the just and honorable thing. Now, is that a bad thing? No. But it depends on your condition of your heart. Now, in Joseph's heart, I don't, I don't think this was a bad thing for Joseph. Joseph was a just man. He was, trying, he was going to do the honorable thing here. But just because it was the honorable thing doesn't mean it was the right thing. And God knew that. So he sent to speak to Joseph in a dream, in a vision. He sent an angel to speak to Joseph. The issue is the condition of our hearts. Listen to what Paul writes in, in Galatians chapter 1. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Sometimes, listen to me, I'm not saying that Joseph was wrong here. Sometimes choosing to do the honorable thing may not be what God wants us to do. Not that God wants us to be un, un, unjust or not to be honorable people. We are to do our yes should be yes and our no should be no. That's f fully biblical there, okay? So please don't hear me say that Joseph was wrong. He was just, he was wanting to do what was honorable, but sometimes, there's another scripture um, that this, I think I'll get to this. Well, no, it's, it's in 1 Corinthians. Um, I think that all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. In other words, just because we have the right to do things and it sounds right that we do it, it doesn't make that, it, that mean that it is right or not right at that moment. Maybe God has something for us for us to do. Not, not that it's illegal or something wrong, but it's just maybe God has a different plan. So go with me here. So just because on the surface, life persuades us to do the honorable thing, just like he did with Joseph. But beneath the surface, God prompts us to be holy. We want to do the honorable thing. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. As long as the condition of our heart is not to please people. And I'm not saying that Joseph was doing justice who do righteousness at all times. 
It's great to be honorable. But it's always best to be holy. And we're not holy on our own. We're only holy through Christ who lives in us. I got one more passage I think that I want to read for you. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or nor about your body, what you will put in on, what you put on, or your life more than food. It is your not your life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air; they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barn. Yet the heavenly Father, your heavenly Father, feeds them. Are they not more valuable? Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour span to your of your life? And I wish I, I wish I had that tattooed on the inside of my eyelids. Because that that is something I I'm anxious about lots of things. But if I remember that, man, I, I just it would solve a lot of my issues. Not all, but some. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the valley, how they grow. They neither coil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will be, uh, he, he will not much more clothe you of little, of little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your Heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first, not the honorable thing. Seek first the holy thing, the kingdom of God, and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself, sufficient for the day is its own trouble. That's a long section, I know, but I think we need to remind ourselves that. Don't be worried about honorable, worried about being what is holy, or doing what is holy and pleasing to God. So let me ask you this as we close. What is it on the surface that brings you anxiety? It causes you to be anxious. It could be, I and mean, if you're like me, it could be a. You, we don't have time to talk about how many of us it is, right? Our list could just be long, right? But what is it for you? And let me leave you with this. Let me, let me uh, challenge you with this. Even though the situation doesn't get better, just trust God. You may not have all the answers. But guess what? The beautiful thing is, you and I aren't required to have all the answers. We're just commanded to trust. You may not have all the answers, but you have the promise of His presence. And as a Christ follower, that should be more than enough. Hey, a couple things we want to remind you. Tomorrow night, we meet at 6.30 in the front room. We're finishing up the book of James uh, tomorrow night. Then next week, on the 19th, we will go out to eat. A uh, place to be determined by you if you come tomorrow night. You'll decide where we go. Uh, and uh, But please come. Also, we have a, a flash sale on all of our merch. And the two weeks, two weeks only. Uh, it's free. Next two weeks. After that, you got to pay for it. Um, or, or anyways but next two weeks is free so take what you want uh, from the table uh, anything you want is fine let me pray this over you as we leave we pray this every week may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and we pray that the Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace our prayer for you tonight is that as you go throughout this week you will let the Word of God, uh, take over the anxiety that we have, and that we go in peace. Thanks so much for being here. See you next.